Meet Adrian Carton de Wired, a man whose life reads more like a Tarantino film than a historical biography. Imagine a soldier who not only survived the bloodiest battles of the 20th century, but also defied death at every turn. Born into an aristocratic family in Brussels in 1880, Carton de Wired's military career spanned two world wars, and his indomitable spirit and sheer resilience made him a living legend. One of the most astounding tales of his life occurred during World War II. 1941, after being captured by the Italians, Carton de Wired was held as a prisoner of war. Not one to be easily subdued, it wasn't long before he made a daring escape attempt. Despite being in his 60s, missing a hand, and wearing an eye patch, he tunneled his way out of the POW camp, and although he was eventually recaptured, his audacious attempt only added to his legendary status. His life was a series of such episodes, and it was these incredible exploits that earned him the nickname, the Indestructible Soldier. Join us as we dive into the extraordinary life of Adrian Carton de Wired, a man who not only witnessed, but actively shaped the course of history with his courage and resilience. This is The Dark History Project. Before we get started, please take a moment to subscribe and hit that like button. Thank you. As previously mentioned, Adrian Carton de Wired was born into an aristocratic family in Brussels in 1880. His father, a distinguished lawyer, ensured young Adrian had access to the finest schooling. However, despite the comfort and opportunities of his early years, the call for adventure was too strong for him to ignore. From a young age, Adrian was captivated by tales of military glory and the thrill of battle. This fascination led him to leave his studies at Oxford University in 1899, eager to join the British Army. At just 19 years old, he embarked on a journey to South Africa to fight in the Second Boer War. Lying about his age and citizenship, he enlisted under the alias Trooper Carton. During this time, his father believed Adrian was still attending law school. The Second Boer War was a brutal conflict, but it also served as the perfect proving ground for Adrian's burgeoning military career. Despite being wounded, on multiple occasions, he displayed an almost reckless disregard for his own safety. These early experiences, in the harsh conditions of the South African veldt, forged his reputation as a fearless soldier. His time in the Boer War was more than just a baptism by fire. The young officer who had left the comfort of his aristocratic life for the harsh realities of war proved himself repeatedly. After his adventurous stint in the Second Boer War, Adrian Carton de Wired continued to build his military career with characteristic vigor and determination. Returning to England, he resumed his studies at Balliol College, Oxford, albeit briefly, as his passion for the military proved irresistible. In 1901, he received a regular commission as a second lieutenant, beginning a series of postings that took him across the British Empire. De Wired served in British Somaliland, where he fought the Somaliland campaign against the dervish forces led by the so-called Mad Mullah, Mohammed Abdul Hassan. During the campaign, he was severely wounded, taking two bullets, one to the face and one to the arm. He was promoted to lieutenant in 1904, reflecting his growing experience and competence as an officer. During this period, he also developed a somewhat reckless approach to military service, often volunteering for dangerous missions and exhibiting a fearless attitude. As tensions in Europe began to rise in the early 20th century, de Wired's military career positioned him perfectly for the coming conflict. By the time 1914 came around and World War I erupted, he was a seasoned and battle-hardened officer ready to face the horrors of the Great War. When World War I erupted in 1914, he was ready, having honed his skills in previous conflicts. In the brutal trenches of France and Belgium, Carton de Wired often led the front and inspired his men amid the chaos and carnage. 
His courage came at a high cost. In 1915, during the Second Battle of Ypres, he was shot in the hand and face, leading to the loss of his left hand and an eye. As the doctor was trying to save his left hand, De Wyatt removed his fingers to speed up the process. He then became known as the one-eyed, one-handed warrior. Throughout the war, Carton De Wyatt was wounded a total of eight times. His gallantry earned him the Victoria Cross in 1916 for his actions during the Battle of the Somme, where he led a series of daring assaults against heavily fortified enemy positions. During the interwar period, he served in various capacities, including as a military attaché in Poland and Hungary, where his experiences and insights were invaluable. As the world edged closer to another great conflict, his experiences in World War I solidified his status as one of the most remarkable soldiers of his generation. Adrian Carton de Wyatt's involvement in World War II is a saga of extraordinary bravery, daring escapes, and movie-like adventures. When the war broke out in 1939, despite being in his late 50s, he eagerly returned to active service, demonstrating his undying commitment to duty. Initially, Carton de Wyatt was stationed in Norway, leading British forces in a campaign against the Germans. In 1941, while en route to Yugoslavia as part of a diplomatic mission, his aircraft crashed in the Mediterranean. Surviving the crash, along with others, they swam to shore, only to be captured by the Italians. Imprisoned in a POW camp, he displayed his characteristic defiance by making multiple escape attempts. His most famous escape involved tunneling out of the camp, and he was eventually recaptured. By this time, remember, he lost an eye and a hand, but this wasn't enough to stop him. One hilarious story about De Wyatt is when in August 1943 he was covertly removed from prison and driven to Rome. The Italian government was already planning their exit from the war and used him to negotiate their surrender. He was sent along with an Italian negotiator to Lisbon to meet Allied contacts and start the negotiation. To maintain secrecy, Carton de Wyatt was required to wear civilian clothes and was taken to an Italian tailor. He insisted, I don't want to look like a gigolo. Highlighting his preference for a more dignified appearance even during such a critical time. But that's who he was. He was a man's man. After Italy's surrender in 1943, Carton de Wyatt was released and returned to Britain. Despite his age and injuries, including his famous eye patch and missing hand, he continued to serve. He was sent to China as Winston Churchill's personal representative to Chiang Kai-shek, where he played a crucial role in fostering Allied cooperation with Chinese forces. Published after the war, his memoir, Happy Odyssey, chronicles his incredible experiences. Adrian Carton de Wyatt passed away at the age of 83, but his adventures, marked by daring and unyielding courage, cemented his place as one of the most remarkable soldiers in military history. Thank you for being with us for this episode of the Dark History Project. Please help us out by liking this video and don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. We're available on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and everywhere else you can listen to podcasts. We hope you enjoyed it, and our next episode will come out soon. See you then.